Fire and ambulance, where is your emergency? I don't know where I am exactly. I'm at Lake St. Louis. The caller was 16-year-old Jamie Rieger. Her brother Joshua and two of his friends had fallen through the frozen lake in their neighborhood. They were bobbing up and down, and he went under a few times. When I fell through the ice, it was like really cold, and I actually thought that I was going to die. I was trying to get out by pushing onto the ice and pulling myself, except every time when I tried, the ice kept breaking. One of the boys, Joshua Sander, managed to pull himself out. By now, the manager of the adjacent housing complex had arrived and taken over the call. Two kids fell on the ice. OK, are you right there with them? They're out there a little bit farther. One's having problems, so yes, we'll fell on the herd. OK, yeah, they're, they're coming. Rescue personnel arrived and pulled Joshua Rieger to safety. But the third boy, John Smith, was still trapped. Tommy Shine of the Winsville Fire Protection Department went in after him. By then, John had been in the water for 15 minutes. He was completely lifeless. Water was coming through his nose because he had taken so much water in at that point and just was starting to turn blue from being submerged for the length of time that he was. After several failed attempts to revive John, EMTs rushed him to nearby St. Joseph's Hospital. Dr. Kent Sutter, the emergency department physician, was the first to see John when he arrived. No spontaneous respirations, no heart tones. Uh, in essence, he was cold and he was, he was dead, he was gone. We get some blood gases. Dr. Sutter and his team made every possible effort to save the 14-year-old boy but couldn't get a pulse. After 45 minutes, Dr. Sutter was ready to call time of death. By now, John's mother, Joyce, arrived and was taken into the ER. I saw his feet, and they were so gray. And I reached over and touched him. And when I touched him, they were so cold. I remember just saying, oh, Holy Spirit, I need you now. I need you now, Lord, please give me back my son. And. All of a sudden, I heard someone say, we've got a pulse, we've got a pulse. To me, at that point in time, God had answered my prayer. And as far as I was concerned, the work was done. But based on experience and John's condition, doctors had a more realistic view. I was not optimistic because being without any respirations and any heartbeat for that length of time, uh, it, certain to cause brain damage um, and severe brain damage. Uh, he could easily be in a vegetative state for weeks or months or years, or it'll all catch up to him and he'll die a few days later. John was stabilized and airlifted to Cardinal Glennon Children's Medical Center in St. Louis, Missouri, to receive the next stage of care. It's just an unnatural situation to see your child laid out and you know, basically unresponsive with tubes and test gear, you know, attached to them. His face was swollen, his chest was swollen, and he was not responding, and the breathing was very, very heavy and hard. At this time, John only had brainstem function, and his blood oxygen levels were critical. By now, friends and family gathered to pray for a miracle, but they weren't alone. John's story went viral as prayer chains spread through Facebook. Facebook was just blowing up. My phone was coming off the wall, people praying, people sending me scriptures that they were praying for John. The next 72 hours were critical as doctors predicted brain swelling, seizures, and lung infections. But none of them materialized. In fact, John kept getting better, and on the 10th day, he was removed from the ventilator and started breathing on his own. Then, the next day, John woke up. Joyce remembers when her son opened his eyes. And I'm thinking to myself, they're wrong, they're wrong. He has more than brainstem function because he is looking around the room and he knows who people are. You know, God is restoring everything back to this child. I couldn't say anything because I had all the tubes and everything in my mouth, but I was thinking, where the heck am I? What happened? Why am I here? On February 4th, just 16 days after being pulled from the icy water, 
John walked out of the hospital with no residual effects from the accident. Jesus heals people not for what we can do for him, uh, but as an example that he is all powerful. A few months later, the family's church threw a party to honor the first responders who helped save John's life that day. It was an emotional moment because I saw my dad and mom crying and just kind of listening and just thinking, how did I survive? And then kind of just praising him for keeping me alive. The Smith family is thankful for prayer and for the power of God that showed the world miracles still happen. He didn't heal him partly or do this part, but not another one. He's the same kid as he was going in. God is there to show up for us at our time of needs and do miraculous things for us. The greatest lesson I've learned is to never lose faith. Jesus Christ is a, he's a miracle worker.